Yes, good morning everyone. Welcome to another uh, series of uh, Trangor Tips. I hope everyone can hear me correct. Uh, welcome again, Trangor Tips. Uh, it's me, Ono. And Danique. And my colleague, uh, Danique. Uh, please let, know if you let, let us know if you're in the chat. Uh, let us know where you're from. Let us know, know uh, wh from what compre company you are. Uh, uh, and, and yeah, welcome. Uh, today we're going to talk about um, uh, a new topic. Uh, we're going to talk about work more efficiently uh, in Trango. You know, Trango is a, a solution. It's a, an, a combined inbox with all your channels. But of course, it's also uh, a way to scale your uh, uh, yeah your customer service team to scale up your uh, uh, performance as a team for the, yeah to make your customers happy. Um, and there are a lot of tools uh, we can we we have in Trango uh, which we would like to share with you. Um, so yeah, like we have this little uh, uh, motto as well, don't work faster, but, but smarter. Uh, we hope in this webinar to give you uh, at least uh, some tips uh, that can help you uh, yeah, work more efficient as a team for yourself uh, and with your customers uh, in general. So uh, yeah, good morning, uh, Thomas, good morning, Esther, uh, uh, and <laughs> good morning, uh, uh, Marco. A lot of people coming <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> welcome. Um, yeah, I'm going to share uh, uh, my screen for a bit because um, that would be useful here mm -mm -mm. there we go so work more efficiently uh, in Trango um, so yeah like last time we're gonna we're gonna talk about some of the challenges we see uh, from our customers uh, day to day uh, and we're gonna bring up uh, uh, around three tips uh, per topic uh, and at the end we're gonna do a little uh, little summary uh, but then is gonna tell a little bit more about uh, yeah what we're gonna talk <coughs> about today yeah, so like the challenges in Trango um, this time for working more efficiently, uh, we summed up in uh, four topics. Um, we're going to talk about collaboration, which is kind of the tagline communicating without talking. So you can use data um, that is available for everybody, um, but you can also use tagging or our new feature, the team chat, to collaborate with your team and work more efficiently. Um, second topic is going to be about assignment, because wouldn't it be nice if the tickets that need to be assigned to you also come to you directly and do not need a person in between to, well, give that ticket yeah. to you. Um, and third topic is going to be about time efficiency. Um, we all know a question that comes in and we're typing the answer over and over again, but you don't have to in Trango. There's a few handy tools um, that you can use to uh, make sure that you stop doing the same task over and over again and just make it more time efficient. Um, the last topic is going to be about workflows, um, and that's a bit more in-depth, but it's all the processes that are running but are in the background. So you can set a lot of things up in Trango using rules and stuff like that, um, which help you in the background to do your work more efficiently. Yeah. Perfect. So yeah, let's go into it. Like maybe one, one good thing is good to mention. Uh, uh, please feel free to answer your questions in the chat as well. Uh, we are going to answer them at the end of the webinar. Uh, and also good to know is we're going to give you a few tips uh, what you can do in Trango uh, among this these few topics. Uh, but like uh, whenever you have like more in-depth questions or you want us our help to help you set it up, uh, please feel free to get in contact uh, with us uh, as well. Um, but yeah, starting uh, with uh, the tips, uh, of course, uh, starting with uh, collaboration, I'm going to give you three tips on, uh, on this topic. Uh, first uh, is, yeah, be creative with uh, teams uh, and labels. I think uh, everybody knows uh, what, what teams are, like you create teams in, in Trango uh, to, yeah, to, to be sure you only see the tickets that are relevant for your team. Um, uh, and labels are this, the, the labels you can attach to, uh, to the ticket uh, when you receive one. Uh, but yeah, be creative. Like I have some examples here, like uh, I think most of, the, uh, of our customers are using this according to the company department. So think about sales, uh, sales department, finance department. Um, but we have some companies uh, uh, also do creating teams uh, based on chat channels. Uh, so imagine you have a team and you have uh, a set of three agents um, doing only chat on that day. Yeah, create a team with only the chat channels in there. So uh, yeah, those agents are focused on the chat and not getting disturbed by the other yeah. uh, by the other tickets. That's actually how we're doing it as well. Cause That's we how we do it as well, yeah. We uh, divide our inbox in an email team and a chat team. So on the days that I'm chatting, I know this is the team I'm going to look in and these are all the tickets that are for me on that yeah. specific day and the email team knows that they use their own team but we still have um, uh, a team inbox where we see everything together but it yeah. just helps you to 
only see the tickets that you need to see, which makes your work so much easier. Yeah, and also the focus, because you know like a lot of tickets are coming in uh, and this inbox can be quite full uh, sometimes. So this helps you really to like filter out the things that are really important for that specific agent. Uh, another example could be uh, teams based on languages. Like if you are a company uh, uh, over the whole world and you have like different teams, German, uh, a German team, an English team, a Spanish team, uh, or whatsoever, uh, make sure to yeah create teams with only the channels uh, that have English tickets in there or, or German tickets. Uh, to also divide that, like without, yeah, so you don't need to look for English tickets whenever, when, whenever you have a lot of Dutch customers. Um, another topic could be uh, based on office, if you have more offices uh, around the world, uh, creating a team based on that. Uh, so as you can see, there are more ways to, to use teams uh, rather than only using teams based on your company uh, department or your company teams. Uh, so yeah, I will uh, really promote, uh, be creative with that. Uh, the same with labels. Uh, of course, labels is a really nice way to, to give the tickets a little bit more information and extra nudge and extra type, type of information. But do know that you can also, uh, in the inbox on the left sidebar, uh, you can see the label also as a folder. Um, so I saw something really creative from one of our customers as well. They they divide labels based on a topic. So they have certain questions and they say, okay, like everything related uh, topic A, we're gonna give a label. Uh, and then as a team, um, they, they, they schedule themselves based on a topic. So they are kind of, uh, how they described it, they kind of uh, work on a certain topic. So on the day, they can answer the same kind of questions, the same type of questions. And in this way, they are really more productive and really more uh, uh, working better as a team. Uh, and they switch every day per topic. Uh, I really like that, uh, that idea. Yeah, it's um, a customer case that's out yeah, from Folio, yeah, right? Customer yeah, customer case as well. It's, it's online. Like, uh, have, have a look at that as well. Uh, but also labels such as uh, key accounts. Like, if you have some really uh, bigger customers, which you want to give, uh, uh, which you want to keep an eye on, uh, you can have them in a separate label and also in a separate folder. Um, if you have some unsatisfied customers, which you want, which you want to keep an eye on to make sure they are going to be a satisfied customer again, uh, create a label for that so someone in the team can take his or her responsibility uh, for that. So yeah, big the tip is like be creative with uh, with teams and, and labels um, another tip tip two: uh, make use or create uh, custom fields and make use of profiles uh, profiles is is uh, in, in our situation one of the biggest uh, communication tool uh, we use uh, without talking like Danik uh, just said uh, for for those who don't really know what a profile is profile is is basically a, 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 a collection of all contact moments and contacts within Trango so imagine you have a, a different people like imagine you're B2B uh, like we are as well B2B and you have different uh, persons from this company uh, reaching out to you or um, you can make sure to 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 yeah to collect them in one profile to to see all the communication and all the contact persons within one place uh, this really helps you to prevent um, having more agents uh, dealing with the same customer or having more agents answering maybe the same questions if more people from the company are asking it. Uh, so yeah, really make use of that. Um, and custom fields. Custom fields uh, give you the opportunity to add in some extra data in the sidebar, um, which are really related to your company. Think about customer IDs, think about maybe account managers, think about, um, yeah, like in this example here, I also, I can show you in uh, our uh, example as well, um, customer ID, uh, but also in the profile field, which I really like, uh, you can, uh, you can set up custom fields like, okay, did this did this com customer had a onboarding, yes or no? And then you can uh, press in, oh yes or no, did not have an onboarding yet. Or uh, is it a key account? Examples like that, that, that can really help you create, uh, generate more insights um, uh, of the customer. And also, yeah, have it on the sidebar right next to the ticket, uh, which really helps you to get that like fast data uh, yeah. for you. So for example, um, I think Marco from NL Educati is there as well. Like if I have a full conversation with Marco about uh, the Flowbot and I want to know my other colleagues that we have been talking about a Flowbot, uh, I can put that in a profile field or a contact field so that they are aware as well. So that's kind of the, the, the part of communicating without talking again. Yeah. You just insert your information that is helpful for the other agents that are working in the inbox and they can easily access it uh, through the use of contact or profile fields. Yeah, yeah, really good one. And to, to touch a little bit back on the profiles, like whenever you touch a profile, uh, you also have the profile history uh, uh, right at the bottom. Uh, and this is the way where you can see, okay, like if you can receive an email from someone, you can see, oh, I see that 15 minutes ago, this, this person also had c contact with my colleague. So maybe we sh I should reach out to her uh, and she can continue the conversation uh, and so on and so on. Um, 
Yeah, and that's it. Uh, and I think here I already uh, uh, came up to the third point and last point from the collaboration. Uh, yeah, make tagging and, 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 and mentioning each other and using team chat uh, the new normal. Um, I, can, I can imagine like when using uh, just email, like the, the, the thing uh, uh, companies used to do is like forward emails or maybe copy pasting an email, putting it into a communication channel uh, and kind of trying to collaborate uh, in this way. Uh, but yeah, try to use tagging. Like you can tag within a ticket, uh, mention your colleague, and say like, hey, can I help you? Or can you help me? Uh, what we are, what what we are really trying to um, educate each other on is like, when you tag, like always give a bit of context, always ask a question. Uh, don't just tag a name because that uh, makes a, makes your colleague need to read the whole ticket maybe. Um, but yeah, really try to see the benefits of of, of tagging each other and create uh, create a to do list. Um, and team chat. Like I'm not going to dive uh, much into uh, team chat, but do know that uh, our colleagues uh, Dragana and Tamara gave a webinar about this. We're going to share this link uh, as well after the webinar. Uh, but they gave a really good introduction about uh, uh, about the team chat. We're we're using it already uh, a lot of times, and a lot of customers are uh, loving it. Um, but yeah, like use team chat to also uh, uh, connect with your colleagues and 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 create groups. Um, and make sure you yeah you have all the teams uh, uh, in one place in one uh, in one package. Um, but yeah, that was the, the three tips of uh, collaboration. Um, so I'm going to give it over to, uh, to Danique, talking about assignments. Great, I can use... Yeah, yeah, I'll just do it like that. Cool. Yeah, so we're talking about assignment, and I already discussed this in the in the, the summary at the beginning, um, but wouldn't it be nice to have the tickets that are meant for you also assigned to you? And it can be either on a user level, but it can also be on a team level. So, for example, um, the department selector is a tool you can use in the website chat. Um, what it does is actually if you place it in... Um, in your website chat, it will give the uh, customer the option to choose the department they want to come in contact with. So, for example, they have a sales question or they have a support question. They will choose the team that they want to connect to and the ticket will automatically be assigned to that team. So, in the backlog, you would say um, sales department, connect to the sales team, support, connect to support. Um, if you're going to use this, do make sure that you use names for your departments that make sense to your customers. So if you have an in-depth structure, please make sure that you use simple terms like sales or support so that the customer knows, because it's up to them to decide which department they want to connect to. Uh, and the more clear it is, well, the more easy uh, assignment becomes as well. Um, and there's another example, yeah, um, about uh, rules. You can use rules for basically anything. It's like an amazing tool to automate a lot of your um, um, your workflows, but you can also use it for assignments. Um, there are three actions in um, the rules section that might be interesting to use. That is either assigning to a user, which makes it so that um, when your trigger and your conditions are set, the ticket will be assigned to a specific user. You can also use it for teams. It will just pop up in the team inbox. But we also have um, uh, an action, and that's assign round robin rule, which um, randomly assigns the ticket to someone of that team. So for example, you can see here in the screenshot that it says assign round robin to team support. So for example, Ono and I are both in the support team, and the rule says, OK, we met the condition, the inbound trigger is there, assign the ticket to team support, and we'll randomly pick me or Anna for the ticket. It doesn't, um, it doesn't look at availability or anything like that, so it's really handy, for example, if you use email, um, but be aware that it will just randomly trigger um, and yeah, will not keep in mind the availability. Um, but if you want to... If, if there's no actual like assignment specific to a user, you can use this to even out the work. So like it's 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 random if I get it or Ono get it, uh, gets it. Um, so yeah, it, it might help um, if you wanna assign things randomly and not to a specific team or person. Yeah, what I also, lo what I also love about it is that yeah, you really make uh, you make it up to a rule or the other one, department selected to, you make you, you, you make the decision up to the customer uh, uh, or, or you make him already the choice to uh, select a certain department and that kind of saves you time for your team to say, okay, this is a ticket, should I assign it to support, should I assign it to finance? And this way you also yeah, save a lot of time there, yeah. uh, which will be really efficient. Um, and yeah, for rules, um, you can set up 
tons of easy rules. Um, you can use a trigger, which is inbound message or closing a ticket or anything like that, uh, which makes it so that the rule will start. The conditions are endless almost. Um, so please look through the list of all possible conditions. If you see one that fits, um, you can use it, try it out, and also look through the list of actions. Um, so these are a few examples. You can set up easy rules by yourself, but if you do need some help setting something up or you're not entirely certain if what you want can actually be automated, feel free to reach out to us. Um, please let us know what you actually want to do, which conditions you want to use, so we can help you um, to look through uh, the possibilities of actually using rules to automate. Um, and our last tip, yeah, <laughs> um, is using a Flowbot. Uh, Flowbot is a really handy tool just in general because it can self-service your customers in a big part. It can gather tons of interesting information that will help you save time because you do not need to ask your customer by typing it. The Flowbot already did. Uh, but it can also help you uh, to navigate your customer toward the right department. So instead of the department selector where the customer chooses, um, with the Flowbot, you're actually making sure that the customer comes out to the correct department by navigating them through your flow. Um, so you're asking questions, making sure you get the right information, and then according to that information, assign them to a specific team. So again, it saves you time because you don't need to assign it yourself. Um, and it saves you even more time because you have tons of interesting information that you can use uh, to help your customer quicker. Um, and I think that it is it for yeah, the nice. assignment. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Next, uh, next point is uh, time efficiency, uh, which is in general already like a, a point we're talking about uh, as well. But like now, I'm going to try to uh, touch a bit deeper into, uh, yeah, three tips how you can save time. Um, one tip, uh, which is really uh, a handy feature in Trango, is quick replies. Uh, some people confuse it with auto replies, but quick replies, like an auto reply, is, auto is a reply that you would send automatically based on a customer uh, coming in contact with you. Uh, a quick reply is, is, is basically a kind of template you can put into your uh, response. So, like this could be like a full message with some information about pricing or about a product or a type of question. Um, uh, and this way, like uh, as a company, you're getting m a lot of the same questions maybe d on a daily basis. Uh, so yeah, don't don't waste too much time like typing this answer uh, over and over again. Um, but besides, you can use it as a full answer. You can also just um, maybe create parts of quick reply because whenever you are uh, uh, give having a quick reply, like imagine you're writing an email, you say, okay, I also need to reply on this. Uh, uh, question within the email, you can also add it to your email. Um, so quick replies gives you a really, um, yeah, broad, uh, uh, like a, a broad opportunity to, to save time. Um, so you know, don't need to type all the questions uh, again. Yeah. Uh, a good thing as well is you can create a tag name in there. So you can also automatically uh, input the name from the contact you're in contact with from the ticket. Um, so that also saves you a, a lot of time and, and directly gives a li little bit of a yeah personal uh, feeling or vibe yeah. of the of the ticket itself. Um, so yeah, you can you can find it uh, in whenever you're creating a ticket. Uh, uh, I have a little screenshot here. And also, um, what we tend to use as well is we have some quick replies that have blank gaps in them. So it's like um, our structure is like written down, like this is the information that the customer needs, but it's specific to that person or that topic or anything like that so we have these blank spaces in our quick replies which we know to fill up so yeah. we just make like it's it's it looks like a tag but we know like hey this is part where it's, it becomes specific to this customer but i uh, for example you have like a it's it's basically a template yeah. i would call it but then yeah. you insert the information that you need at that point to inform the customer so it could be an order number or anything like that so you can also use quick replies for that to yeah use it as a template and insert it in your email yeah, good one. And also maybe another good tip is like when you have a lot of quick replies and you're uh, again working among different languages. Um, yeah, I think like about a good strategy how to name your templates. Like I would uh, like I would advise to give short, simple names. Uh, and if you have different languages, maybe put it like in this example. Like we we differentiate our templates also based on language. Uh, and we even in in, in our own uh, quick replies we also d uh, uh, um, define the department. So we have a little uh, for customer success with CS for example. So you know, okay, there's an English. Uh, template for CS uh, uh, and you can yeah you can better navigate through them and, and easily see which uh, yeah which templates uh, you're looking for uh, so yeah tip one create uh, quick replies 
Um, the second tip is uh, is again use the the flowbots. Uh, like you, we have a lot of you have a lot of contact with. If you're using the website chat uh, or any other uh, uh, chat like WhatsApp uh, uh, or whatsoever, uh, make use of of the flowbots. Uh, the flowbots, um, yeah, has a lot of uh, potential. So it's, uh, you can do a lot with it. But what I want to touch on in this example is, yeah, try to cr to collect customer information. Like you always, uh, I think every company has uh, questions they always want to ask. Like what's your name? What's your email address? Uh, maybe you are interested in some uh, order number if you're uh, selling products um, yeah like there sometimes there are always uh, questions you need to ask so like yeah save your customer team time for asking those questions and let the flowbot handle those questions first so set up a flowbot like I have an example here um, what's your name uh, what's your email address uh, what's the order number uh, and according to these uh, fields they will be filled in into the uh, the custom fields we talked about earlier or into the contact uh, and anywhere like from this you can you can you can you can use to build a flowbot further but you can also use it just to collect customer data and then from then assign it to, to a certain team uh, but in this way it saves a lot of time um, yeah asking all those details out uh, so be, be, be creative with that as well, uh, and this works perfectly together with uh, the custom fields we have. Uh, just want to show it a little bit. Um, I'm not going to give a full demo of the Flowbot because we're going to give a, 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 a webinar about the Flowbot soon as well. Um, but what I do want to uh, show uh, is that there are some options as well. Like whenever you are uh, inserting a, a, a question, uh, one option that I really like is that whenever a customer comes to your website, uh, and he fills in his data, uh, you can ask like the next day, like if the customer comes back the other day, you can ask, uh, you can, you have two options. You can say, okay, I want to have the information again, but that could be a bit of double work and maybe, yeah, can be a bit annoying for the customer. Um, you can also confirm the previous input. So you can ask the customer, hey, is your name still Danique? You can say yes. Uh, is your email address uh, uh, still uh, this? Uh, and then you can help the customer, um, yeah, just fill it in uh, again. Um, because whenever the customer comes back, the Flowbot will remind uh, the data uh, because it's filled in in the ticket uh, already. So that's uh, a good one to know as well. Saves you time and saves the customer time. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it works both ways. Um, yeah, and, and tip three uh, is yeah, consider uh, building a, a help center. Like in Trengo, you can uh, build a help center. I'm, I'm quite sure everyone is uh, familiar with our help center, uh, but do know that you can build uh, such a help center yourself as well. Uh, I think uh, uh, we use it to, to, to answer a lot of our customers' questions. Like, of course, we answer a question, but if people want to have more information, we always redirect them to the help center. Um, so yeah, this also helps you uh, a lot of time. Like, uh, I mean, you can put all your answers uh, in a quick reply, which is also a nice solution, but you can also yeah, help people um, yeah, understand your product uh, uh, with the help center. Um, uh, what also is good to know, you can also use the help center for internal uh, information. Uh, with the help center, you can uh, basically put a password on there and you can also use it as maybe a, a help center for your for your team, like uh, to, to, to document some work processes, to document some, uh, some, some technical topics perhaps. Um, so you can either use it for your customers, uh, but you can also use it for your employees. Uh, and this helps al also helps you maybe to uh, re-explain everything over and over again uh, and always give the customer and your employees a place to go to when they have uh, open questions. Yeah. Next one, workflows. Workflows. Yeah, this is, uh, I really like this because I, I like it when everything runs in the background and I do not have to do as much work. Um, so yeah, that's why we're talking about workflows. Um, for everything that we're discussing um, in the back is always we're gonna go back to rules. Rules will help you immensely if you if you set them up correctly, use the right conditions. And for all these topics, like they are kind of connected, but we'll talk about that uh, at the third tip. Uh, first one is using labels. Um, Ono already talked about it a bit. Um, you can use labels for basically anything. It really depends on your specific um, company and how you want to use them. You could use them for urgent matters, like you could say, hey, um, this ticket needs to be picked up immediately um, and I want to put that label urgent on it, um, which can be done manually, but you can also do it automatically. Um, looking through rules, you would look for a condition and in this case, you could say if the email subject contains urgent uh, or anything else, like in any translation, spoot in Dutch, um, I want to place this label 
onto the ticket so that my team is aware that when they look through the ticket preview, they will immediately see um, this label is urgent. So they don't have to look through the whole email. They will just see um, the label placed. Uh, we make it red for everything that needs our attention immediately. So that pops up. Um, so you don't have to um, look through the entire ticket to know what topic or what action is required. Um, so yeah, using labels, you can do topics, you can do um, actions also, or actions that your um, uh, colleagues need to make. So it's again, it's 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 kind of endless how you want to make it. Um, and the best part about it is that well. First of all, labels can be automated using rules, but you can also get a lot of data out of labels um, uh, from Trango analytic Analytics, um, which will not necessarily help you be more time efficient, but it can help you improve your workflow. Because if you know there are tons of tickets coming in with the label urgent or from a specific department, which is perhaps understaffed, you can look through Trango Analytics and make it so that your workflow better fits the needs of your uh, of your customers. And in that way, you can automate it again and make your team work more uh, efficiently because you can, from the analytics, can see how you need to structureize your company or your, uh, your support team. Um, view is something that might not be familiar to everybody, um, but Trango in itself is a ticketing system. So we're not um, uh, an, an traditional email inbox and traditional email inboxes use stuff like folders and maps that you can use. We don't really have that, but we have something called views, which can help you if you want to create a structure. Um, what is important to know is that views work on four different conditions. Am I saying that right? Yeah, four different conditions. Um, first one is labels, second one is channels, users, or the status of a ticket. And using these four conditions, you can make your own folder. So for example, um, I am a manager of uh, the support team and I want to know which, um, I want to see all the tickets that have the label complement and are from the website chat and um, are assigned to the um, the agents in my team, which are in this example, Ono and Eric. So creating this view, it helps me to see all the tickets in one go. So I don't have to look through all the inboxes and search for it. Because th what this view does is all the tickets with the label complement, which are from either Eric or Ono, and come from the website chat channel will be automatically put in this view. So it will create a map, create a folder, so to say, which combines these tickets. So when I need to uh, do my uh, assignment or my feedback to um, Eric or Ono, then I can look through this ticket and see if this, if they're doing great or yeah, um, yeah I can give them the feedback. And again, this is all really depending on how you work in Trango. Um, but yeah, please look through it if you have any questions or are curious to see if what you want to make uh, is actually possible, reach out to us again um, so we can help you set this up. Um, yeah, and uh, last is the rule part. Um, I want to give you an example um, from, I found it really interesting that they built this and I think a lot of people can benefit from that, from this. So. Um, for example, you are regularly um, receiving invoices from um, the, uh, different departments and they all have the same su uh, email subject. So they're all saying this is an invoice from Trango, for example. Um, that means you already have a pretty solid condition for uh, making a rule because in uh, the condition part of the rule, you can see that you can uh, select email subject and you can type in your own email subject. So in this case, it would be invoices from Trango. And when that condition is met, you can trigger um, you can trigger an action. But I kind of want to show you real life. There we go. So yeah, I already created it, but I want to walk through the steps one by one. So first, you would make your name, of course. Um, having it active means that it's actually working. Uh, placing it on inactive will mean that it's not working at the time, but you won't delete it. And it's important to always um, select the channel where your rule applies to. So for example, in this case, it will only be the sales email because um, I'm only getting invoices on this email and I only want to trigger this email address. Um, there is a four different types of um, 
triggers you can use and we're going to use inbound message for this one because we're receiving an invoice and that's an inbound message um, and as you can see here there's tons of conditions that you can use but we're focusing on the email subject because for this particular case that we have the email subject is the part where um, which, which which is consistent all the time so every ticket that comes in in the sales email uh, with the email subject invoice from Trango and has an email attachment because it says email attachments equals yes will be forwarded to team at Trango. This is normally something that I that you would do manually but like be aware that you can do this automatically. There's tons of conditions that you can mix match, uh, work with uh, and tons of actions that you can use to yeah create workflows like this. Um, and I do want to point out again, if you need help setting this up, um, please connect to us, let us know. You can chat with us, WhatsApp us, mail us at teamatrango.com. Um, but yeah, we're glad to help out because we think we use this a lot. And I think this is one of the coolest parts of Trango because literally it's, it's almost endless. And there is so many workflows that you can automate, which you might not even be aware of you can automate. So if you have anything, reach out to us. Yeah, so that's also really the purpose of this webinar as well. Like we didn't go really into depth on every point. We really want to yeah, spark your creativity and, 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 and let you know that some of these features are here. Um, and yeah, we're always there to, to help you uh, with, your, yeah, with your goals. So um, yeah, please reach out to us. Um, yeah, summary. So like uh, we talked about a lot of things uh, today. We talked about uh, collaboration, about assignments. Uh, we've talked about a lot about uh, time efficiency oh. um, and also about, about like some workflows where Danique uh, just uh, went through. So we hope you liked it. Uh, I see a lot of questions uh, coming in. So we, we're going to try to answer uh, as, as much as we can. Uh, I saw already like uh, uh, some question, uh, a lot of qu uh, questions about the quick replies uh, actually. I saw um, a question about uh, someone, I'm not sure which one it was. Uh, but it was about, hey, my, my quick reply is not working for email, e email even though I've set it up. Uh, here I would like to advise you to ha have a good look uh, when you create the quick reply because there are two types of quick replies. There's a quick reply for messaging and there's a quick reply for, uh, for email. Uh, the reason why they're different is because uh, with email you have more possibilities. You can have an HTML rich text, so you can add uh, photos, you can add, uh, you can add uh, hyperlinks. Uh, hyperlinks, you can make your text bold or uh, all that the kind of things. Like these are poss possibilities that you don't have in, in in messaging and messaging you can add a attachment um, but you don't have this HTML uh, rich features uh, that you do have with email so whenever you're creating a quick reply uh, yeah have a good look at the type so maybe I, I have the assumption that this is the problem in, in this case so uh, have a look at that uh, beside that I saw actually a lot of uh, feedback uh, on the uh, on the quick replies because whenever you add a quick reply it adds on the top uh, which is correct uh, and I see a lot of cool ideas where people ask okay uh, maybe we can put it in whenever you are uh, uh, on the where you are wherever your course race or at the end um, so yeah really great feedback that's at this moment we don't have that like whenever you add a quick reply it's indeed uh, it's, it's coming in from the top um, but we will definitely forward this uh, to our product team uh, so I yep. can have a look at it uh, and, and perhaps with the, with the following updates uh, uh, yeah this can be improved so thanks for that feedback that's yeah. really useful um, and I'm also seeing from Thomas which is the very first topic I think we discussed uh, how would you filter that? Um, and I think this is about the team part. So it says, I no mean, wishes. how will the German tickets, for example, get in the German team? Is there some kind of detection tool? Um, I was actually talking to a customer yesterday and we set something up using rules again. Um, and we uh, said if the email contact ends with .com or .nl or .de, um, automatically assign it to the team that is responsible for that language. So you could look into that. You can also do it for contact um, phone. So if you have a prefix, I mean, in, in the Netherlands, we have a plus 31, um, that automatically can assign to yeah, a Dutch team. Nice. Um, so you could look, you uh, look into using um, uh, rules as a, your detection tool to see if you can find certain conditions that match why you would want to yeah. um, set a certain ticket to... Um, to a German team. If you're talking about website chat, that's an interesting one, but please reach out to us with your uh, what you actually want to achieve. 
so we can reach yeah. out to you because it's a bit uh, it's it's it goes really in depth. Um, but yeah, yeah. Well, like the thing that that is maybe uh, easy is that like uh, a lot of people lose it using one widget, but it is, for example, possible to create a widget for the Dutch website other than a widget for a German or an English website. Uh, that's how we have the well. Like we have an English widget on our English website, uh, so we yeah. know okay whenever tickets are coming in from our English widget, uh, we make sure it ends up to yeah Team English maybe like if we have some English uh, speaking. Uh, um, uh, team members, so that could also be an option. But yeah, please reach out to us, like uh, yep. like uh, tell us your challenges if it comes to dividing tickets across countries. Uh, we're more than happy to give like all these tips uh, that Denis gave you uh, and help you set it up. Yeah. But good um, point, good point. Um, seeing, are there other tags where you can insert into the quick reply? At the moment, we're only using the name tag, um, but we're going to take this with us as feedback as well. And it's about the quick replies. From Marco. Yeah, I hear one question from Sebastian as well. Oh. Like, uh, according to uh, labels, uh, labels getting out of hand. Like, I can imagine that as a company, you are you are getting uh, a lot of labels, um, and you're requesting here like some sign. Okay, is there a way to folder them? Um, no, that's not. I do I do think that's a good point of feedback. But maybe a, a, an idea that you can use is you can color the uh, uh, the labels. So maybe like if you have a group of similar labels, uh, maybe you group them into one color, uh, or also be creative with the names, uh, like we did, uh, like we explained with uh, quick replies. Uh, Maybe this could be uh, a solution for that, but like I really like the idea of, of having folders uh, and labels because yeah. um, we also have some quite uh, uh, labels ourselves yeah. as well. <laughs> and what um, we are doing actually is we are we all have like two letters for each company. So sales is SA and we are uh, CS. So what we do to kind of have an overview on which tickets belong to which department, we have um, first the two letters of the actual department and then what the uh, label is about, which also helps us to navigate a bit better. Uh, but the folder option is definitely a good one. Um, I'm not sure if there's any over to the top. Change that. Is there any function that I can use to send hundreds of emails to customers in one time? No, we don't have the bulk option for emails. That's not something we have. Um, um, no, you cannot sort on color, uh, but maybe this, like whenever you go to your label overview, you can uh, you have a get, you have a better overview of all the labels that are there. Uh, but it's indeed not possible to to sort on color, uh, which is maybe like to to give some ideas on yeah how to maybe be creative with the features that are now. Um, but yep. yeah, good good uh, good feedback, uh, Sebas. Thanks. Um, yeah, I think th these were the most questions. Like maybe if some if we miss some questions, uh, we'll go over them. Maybe we we are able to to reach out to you uh, as well. But I think we're gonna uh, leave it uh, uh, as it is for now. Um, so thanks uh, for the interaction here. Like thanks for the questions. I think there were some really uh, cool questions. We answered a few, and I think some of them are also some really good uh, feedback. Uh, yep. So we will uh, of course yeah bring that to the right place. Uh, another good thing is uh, to realize that we have. Um, let me see if you can see everything. Um, yeah, I just wanted to repeat this one uh, again. Like uh, we have a lot of resources uh, uh, at Strengo. Uh, so whenever you need more information, uh, Trengo.com sends resources. We have uh, collect all our white papers, all our webinars, all our videos. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, go to this page if you need some extra information. Uh, obviously our help center, we talked about that today. Um, uh, and we have a YouTube channel where we save uh, these kind of videos, uh, but also the webinar uh, about the team chat uh, where Dragana and, and, and Tamara talked about a few weeks ago. Uh, we, we put them in different playlists, so, so yeah, feel free to have a look, uh, watch our videos, um, uh, they can be really useful. Yeah, and you can also, we're, I think in a few days, this webinar will also be going live on YouTube. So if you want to watch it back, you can, or you can forward it to a colleague that is also, um, well, perhaps managing your Trango inbox and can greatly benefit from all these tips um, on working more efficiently. Yeah. And of course, like we said, like feel free to reach out to us. Uh, this is our email address, teamatrango.com. Uh, thank you very much uh, for attending. Um, and um, yeah, follow us on LinkedIn as well, because this is the place where we uh, uh, always launch our uh, product releases or updates. So follow us on LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, thank you very much yeah. for attending. Thanks for attending and, and uh, uh, see you next time. Yeah, see you next time. <laughs> Probably next time uh, we're going to talk about uh, the flow bolt. Yeah. So that's going to be also really an uh, interesting one. But it's um, most likely going to be after the summer vacation. So yeah. also <laughs> for everyone joining, like enjoy your summer. Yeah, enjoy your <laughs> summer. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.